Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, do you know where it uh, it goes after it is recorded? Yeah, there will be a file. I think I had tried it once, and um, I don't know. Maybe this file is very big that I don't know because I never recorded uh, a longer period. Oh, it's go to your computer, Albert. So yeah, yeah. It's not very big. It's and then actually it's preceded by Zoom, so. For one hour lecture, it's about 200 megabytes. I see. Nothing. Yeah. Much. So then uh, I would uh, uh, I would ask you to send it to Rybakov afterwards so that he can put it on the page of, of the seminar. Okay. Sounds good. 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 So it's 10 minutes past, so we can start, I think. Okay, good, and uh, thank you very much for the possibility to talk here. And uh, that is a, a, a new seminar about number theory and quantum physics that we do be monthly uh, between uh, Bonn and Moscow, or maybe some other German cities like Mainz, Heidelberg, and Bonn. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, basically, Vasily has uh, created this activity as many others. So that uh, my talk today will uh, be about uh, the analytic structure of a particular Feynman amplitude, which is called the banana amplitude, uh, because its uh, topology resembles somehow a banana. And uh, <clears throat> this was work that I did with uh, four students here in Bonn, um, which are written here, and it's based on two preprint, uh, two preprints. One is published, actually, the first one, and then a very recent preprint number two. And in a sense, you can, uh, <clears throat> I can say that it will deal very much with uh, periods of Calabi-Yau manifolds, um, and uh, uh, this will be manifolds of high dimension. I mean, the dimension actually uh, depends on the loop order of the uh, Feynman integral. And in some sense, uh, when I learned about Calabi-Yau manifolds, which are, um, uh, in, in our case, are compact um, projective manifolds, so they're embedded in a, in, a, in a projective space. And we will deal with um, uh, Calabi-Yau manifolds, which are either given by a hypersurface in a projective space, or with such which uh, are given by um, a complete intersection in a projective space. And as uh, I wanted to say that when I learned about the Calabi-Yau manifolds, they were basically uh, used as compactifications for string theory, which, um, which required supersymmetry. But what was imp uh, impressive in the last uh, couple of years was that, um, that these uh, periods of Calabi-Yau manifolds are actually useful in quantum field theory. Uh, in that you can calculate perturbative quantum field theory amplitudes. And uh, <clears throat> this is an example of this development. And one can uh, even say that uh, even so the graphs are uh, look quite simplified. Um, I, um, I mean, the uh, phenomenologist at CERN uh, used this graph, this banana graph, at three loops to uh, say something about the Higgs decay. Uh, so this is, is really relevant for phenomenology and uh, the reason that you get the simplified topology is that some propagators in the graph are very heavy so that uh, you get this simple, uh, this in an approximation, you get this simple topology. So it's, uh, in a way, it, uh, Calabi-Yau manifolds have uh, turned from a um, concept that requires supersymmetry to a tool that might even find supersymmetry at the colliders or other things. So that's an interesting development. And um, I wanted to start, now if I can, I wanted to start with, uh, um, an, uh, so to say, a concept uh, of, um, I mean, uh, to explain you what kind of integrals appear if you do Feynman integrals. So Feynman integrals uh, occur as a perturbative approach to quantum field theory. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, they, you work order in order in perturbation theory in the coupling constant. 
and you uh, have usually fermions and, and bosons. You have to do some gamma gymnastics to uh, get um, to the integral that I will present you. But uh, the integral that I will present you is, so to say, uh, an atomic or simplified form of the typical integrals that appear in Feynman graph calculations. And that are the properties of the integral. So here is a typical integral. It will depend on the external momenta of the uh, particles that go into the graph and the masses of the particles that uh, are involved in the uh, propagators of the graph. And uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, sorry, Albrecht. Uh, um, we do not know neither what is uh, a Feynman graph nor what is a propagator. Okay, I mean the um, so the thing is um, that is um, that that is uh, of course a concept in quantum field theory that um, you draw a graph and then um, this uh, represent how particles interact in a space time and uh, when you um, uh, and the propagator is something like a Green's function that tells you when you have uh, a particle on one uh, place, how it, uh, how it affects another place. And so, uh, so this is, a, is, of course, a bit, little bit too complicated uh, concept to explain really in good detail. So what I try to do is I would present you an integral that hopefully you can relate to, um, namely uh, this integral that I have uh, written here. Um, but... Um, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, uh, to, to make this really an elementary talk, you need uh, to, uh, you need to uh, really go into perturbative quantum field theory. But this, uh, I would say, at this point would take a little bit too long. So maybe for now, I'm allowed to say that this, uh, what this integral is. So it's a, the integrand is a rational uh, function that is u and g are polynomials. And uh, the difference, is, and then there is, a, there is a variable in which I integrate the measure that will be appearing on the next page. It's basically a measure over uh, Pn. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, this x are the homogeneous coordinates of this Pn. And uh, the, um, the, um, <clears throat> the rational function is a polynomial in x. Uh, in the numerator, it's just a polynomial in x, but in the denominator here, this uh, g, uh, can be a function of x, but it also depends on the physical parameters uh, that uh, we mentioned. This was the external momentum and the masses. And here uh, we have uh, d is the dimension of the space-time in which you calculate your Feynman graph. Uh, n is the number of edges, so this is just like uh, what you think is in a graph. And uh, nu is their multiplicity, so you can have uh, edges with multiplicity. And then uh, this w is a, a <clears throat> quantity that is made out of these uh, uh, quantities, namely it's the sum of the multiplicities of the edges. And by the way, these edges, we call them propagator. I mean, if you, I mean, that, that, is, um, that is a property of Feynman graphs that uh, it has uh, edges and these edges correspond to the propagators. And so this, uh, this, uh, new, uh, uh, this omega, this is a sum of the multiplicities. And then this is the loop order. So we will see in graph where I can explain this in more detail. And then it's a dimension over one half. So here I said this is L is the number of loops. And um, well, if the graph is planar, then you can also calculate the vertices uh, from the Euler number of the graph when you have the number of edges and the number of loops. Our graphs will be planar graphs. And here is the thing that I omitted um, or didn't fit on the page. So this is uh, the domain over which is integrated. So it's a domain um, in, I mean, this is the homogeneous coordinates of this Pn minus one. And then the x are real and positive. So it's actually uh, not, a, uh, not a, a, a cycle, but rather a chain. So it has boundaries. And, uh, and uh, this is the integral, uh, this is this uh, over which I want to integrate. And that is the measure, which is just, as I said, is the uh, measure on Pn, I said Pn, but it's Pn minus one. So it's the standard uh, measure that you can put on this projective space. Albrecht, uh, and uh, dimension D is the dimension of what? 
of the space time. So you can do this in four dimension. I mean, what was what physicists observed is um, if you do an integral in four dimensions, then you will see that this integral actually diverges. So what uh, physicists are very familiar with is to do uh, the integral in d um, minus epsilon dimensions. And they call this uh, epsilon is the dimensional regularization parameter. So this serves to regularize uh, integrals that are in principle infinite. But d is the dimension of the space-time. That means uh, we are interested in a dimension four, basically, when we calculate uh, normal Feynman uh, graphs. So it's, it's really the dimension of the, of the space where physics happens. So, and as I said, I mean, uh, 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 this, this integral uh, need a dimensional regularization. So uh, uh, you subtract for some uh, historical reason two epsilon because the formulas gets easier, but uh, essentially you, uh, you evaluate it in a lower dimension. And then uh, you can seek for a Laurent expansion, uh, which is of this form. And, uh, and uh, this is, was a development, um, Bogner and Weinzierl, this paper, I should have uh, given the date, but it is around 2000. So people have realized that uh, these integrals are, um, are uh, all periods on algebraic varieties and potentially even all periods on Calabiao varieties. And we say Calabiao motifs because it's not clear that the full cohomology of a particular Calabiao is relevant. Maybe it's a sub cohomology that is relevant uh, for these periods, but um, but in uh, minimally, these uh, things, uh, these Calabiaos are realized in L minus one dimension. That will be also the case uh, uh, in, for the banana graph. Um, so now I come to a very particular Feynman graph, which is very simple, of course, as you see. Um, so it is. Um, it is a series of Feynman graphs which have just one external momentum, uh, and it has um, it has um, uh, L plus one masses, so it has L loops. So you see the number of meshes is L, uh, and then uh, it has uh, it has L of these mass parameters. And uh, now we can calculate these. Um, this uh, Albrecht, when yeah. you see uh, uh, count the number of loops. Mm -hmm. You do not mean all the loops. You mean only the planar loops where there is nothing inside. That's right. So it's this is a planar diagram. So basically, all these uh, meshes here, this one, this one, and this one, which I have dotted, they are all a uh, loop. So wherever you have a, a closed uh, closed uh, circle, then you call this a loop. So uh, so the um, it's a planar graph. So you can. Uh, draw it in on the sphere and um, that therefore this is the Euler number of the thing that you can draw it on. This is two. And uh, if you calculate these quantities, uh, then you see um, if you do this in D dimension. Now this sounds a little bit funny, but this is really needed for the dimensional regularization. So even so this calculation happens in two dimensions, uh, the a result is uh, relevant for four dimensional integrals um, due to this dimensional regularization procedure. So if you now um, look uh, at the multiplicity of the propagators and the uh, number of loops and the dimension uh, in this quantity here, you will see that this one becomes one. Uh, and uh, this one is also one because D is two. That means the numerator just vanishes and the, uh, and the denominator is just one polynomial um, and the power is true. So if you uh, look what this is, then uh, in fact, one question more. Can you show the graph again? Yes. Uh, you see that the uh, right and the uh, left edge is one and the same edge that, uh, uh, or these are two edges. So or this K here, uh, well, I mean, yes. this K must be the same because you have momentum conservation. Yeah. So uh, in fact, it's an extra loop, uh, a K loop, so to say, or not? Is not a K loop. This, uh, only the internal loops count here. Yeah, uh, but uh, in the graph uh, itself, the uh, right-hand point 
uh, is it the same as the left bekannt point? No, 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 sorry. Okay. I mean, that is, uh, that is not true, but it's the same momentum because of momentum conservation. Oh, yeah. But the topology of the graph is just as it nicely as it's counted. No periodicity or anything. I see. So if you, um, if you write then the integral that, uh, that uh, I had in generality before, um, uh, that is, of course, a calculation now that I suppress. I mean, this is what, uh, what um, uh, let's say, graduate physicists who study perturbative quantum field theory would uh, train very much to do. And then you calculate uh, this expression. Um, and here you see we have only one polynomial because this was basically before it was my G. I could have still called it G. But this is this uh, uh, Laurent polynomial and uh, and uh, <clears throat> the first interesting observation, I mean, uh, it it has, as I said, I mean, this uh, this polynomial in the in the denominator can depend on the physical parameters, and it does. So this is the is um, is uh, the nom momentum squared. Only that it's convenient to uh, introduce dimensionless uh, parameters. So you uh, uh, divide this by a mass scale, and also you divide the masses by a mass scale. So this uh, t and xi, they become dimensional parameters. So you have one uh, momentum, and then you have these L plus one mass parameters, which are now a little bit rescaled. So the first thing that you, um, that you uh, realize, and that uh, will uh, delight uh, Butterev, is that, uh, that when, you do this, um, when you do this Newton polytop of this um, polynomial uh, divided by this factor here, uh, then, uh, then you find that this is actually reflexive uh, in a canonical uh, rank L lattice. And, uh, and if you draw the first ones, then you see, okay, in, uh, in one dimension, it's like this. In, uh, in three dimension, it's like uh, the blow up of P2 in uh, three points. And it happens, so happens that these three points uh, uh, correspond to the mass parameter or to some thing which is related to the mass parameters uh, here. Uh, but if you uh, draw it, um, so this would be uh, the Calabiao associated to this would be an elliptic curve. Uh, this is just a rational curve. And this is a case three surface. So you see the um, complexity uh, gets quickly uh, bigger. But you see also another thing, namely, if you count the, uh, the complex or the parameters that, uh, that appear in the geometry so here, these are two, just like we had the masses and the somehow a rescaled momentum. Here we have uh, three, we have three masses for the uh, two loop graph. This corresponds to the two loop graph. But here we have somehow already, uh, even so the, the uh, three loop graph has only, um, has only four masses. We have here already eight perturbation parameters. So in a sense, it's a, it's a description of the uh, Feynman graph, but it becomes uh, the deformation space of the associated Calabiao becomes more and more redundant. And I say it's bigger than the parameter, parameters of the Feynman diagram. And, uh, but anyway, this is a good approach that has also been taken by people like uh, Pierre van Hove. So you have in particular, uh, by the construction of Butterev, you have um, uh, you have um, um, a Calabiao. I mean, here is now the dimension of the Calabiao. This is L minus one, and uh, this is given by uh, this uh, Newton polytop in the um, in the projective space, which is canonical, uh, uh, defined by the dual of the Newton polytop, which exists because it's reflexive, and you have at the same time you have the mirror uh, manifold. Uh, here. So that is actually uh, gives some interesting structure which helps you to calculate the Feynman graph. So, so what is the uh, task now from the point of view of um, algebraic geometry? Um, you have to uh, find um, a relative period over an L minus one cycle that I have given you. Um, and um, and uh, well, given that uh, fact, uh, you can actually calculate this Feynman graph. So what this whole, um, uh, what, uh, what this teaches you is that, um, well, it basically teaches you nature, you know, nature loves uh, elliptic functions. We know that uh, since we have solved the Kepler problem, uh, but nature for some reason also loves uh, periods of Calabiaus of higher dimension. 
and they occur in this Feynman graphs. I don't have a physical explanation what this has to do with string theory compactification. It's just that, um, that uh, these um, period functions do appear in nature and, uh, and in particular they appear in, in Feynman integrals. So that is a more conceptual remark, but uh, what you have now to do is you have to determine the flat Gauss-Mannin connection on this manifold and solve for the periods. And uh, uh, the periods, uh, I mean, you choose a basis, uh, an integral basis in the uh, middle cohomology of this Calabiao manifold. And, uh, and uh, it turns out that the form actually, uh, if this, uh, if this, uh, if you look at the form that emerges by this standard mu that I give over the polynomial, it's actually the L minus. It's a holomorphic form that is uh, is the hallmark of any any Calabi-Yau manifold that it has such a form, and you have to uh, do this integral, and uh, <clears throat> and then uh, I mean. Oh, sorry, Albert. Yes? Uh, right now, all the algebraic geometry is of, is over complex. No, complex. This yeah. is not. Yeah. So everything is complex. Everything you do complex. I mean, at the end, you might choose uh, the parameters to be on the real line uh, because these are physical parameters. But uh, but uh, you you work just in the complex. Uh, you 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 calculate complex periods. Yeah. That is the best way to do that. And uh, and so the uh, so to say this uh, finding this um, Gauss-Mannin connection I mean is uh, is basically uh, in this context best done by uh, by using this gelfand kapranov selevinsky differential system of the ambient space and then derive the Picker-Fuchs D module um, so basically you search from that a complete set of differential operators which annihilate these periods. And, um, and, uh, and have no other solutions. And uh, this can be done in various ways. I mean, if you, uh, if you, I mean, the, the gelfand kapranov selevinsky system is very powerful because it uses the symmetry so efficiently. But you could also use um, Griffith's reduction method. This would be sort of say uh, more painful, uh, but, um, but uh, of course it's, it's known how to do uh, this calculation that I propose here uh, in algebraic geometry. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> but the point is, um, this leads as, uh, this leads to uh, I mean, if you solve this Picard-Fuchs equation, so let me let me say at the beginning one task that phys uh, that physicists uh, pose us. So physicists want to calculate this integral very fast. I mean, that's uh, because they have uh, ultimately to do an integral over the momentum at the end uh, numerically. So what they want you to do is to calculate this integral very fast for all values of the parameters. That's what they sort of want, uh, the phenomenologists. And, uh, and so uh, it is uh, of huge advantage if you know a differential equation uh, that annihilates these periods. But of course, uh, once you have this differential ideal, or, or uh, then you have to find the right linear combination that uh, that is actually. I mean, you can then always find the Frobenius basis, a local Frobenius basis uh, that solves this uh, differential equation. But you have to uh, know what is the right linear combination to actually get the Feynman graph, and uh, <clears throat> we can uh, achieve that at the MUM point actually using. Uh, the formalism of gamma classes, which I will say a little bit about what this is uh, later in the talk. But of course, this uh, this is now uh, this integral over the over the closed period. So what we really need is an integral over the uh, over the chain integral. And the way you can do this is you com can commute the deformation of the modulus, which correspond to the inner point. I mean, this, uh, this is a reflexive polyhedron. It has a unique inner point. Um, and you commute this, um, this um, parameter due to this ideal. I mean, the, the ideal is, uh, is, is, a der is, is, a, is in derivatives with respect to these parameters. And <clears throat> then you can derive a, a, a linear but inhomogeneous differential equation. And this lin linear and inhomogeneous differential equation is actually the one that is relevant for the Feynman graph. 
But of course, um, in order to solve this, uh, this inhomogeneous linear differential equation, you first solve the uh, linear differential equation, which is essentially determining the periods of the Calabi-Yau. And then you find one more uh, special solution, and, uh, and that will give you the description of the Feynman graph. So, uh, <clears throat> so then, um, this is what I say here. So the homogeneous solution, they correspond to the period, uh, made, uh, period vectors uh, on the Calabi-Yau over the holomorphic 3-0 form. And uh, then you have to add this inhomogeneous solution. And I sort of say, uh, call all these solutions, Frobenius solutions, um, um, in the, uh, I mean, I number them just, uh, I mean, if you would have HL minus one, that would be the number of periods on the Calabi-Yau. And then I uh, take the last inhomogeneous solution just by uh, letting this index run to HL minus one plus one. So, so then this problem of finding the right combination that describes the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Feynman graph is you uh, construct the local Frobenius spaces everywhere in the physical parameter space. And then you have to determine this particular linear combination. And this linear combination, of course, is in general complicated arithmetic numbers. I will uh, say a little bit about this in, in, uh, in the course of the talk. And, uh, and you want to have this everywhere in the, I mean, you basically want to cover the modelized space of physical parameters with convergence regions, or um, uh, uh, I mean, you have divisors, you, you, do, uh, no, you, you resolve the divisors until you have normal crossing. Then you have two neighborhoods uh, along, along this in which this, uh, uh, in which this basis converges. And then you want to um, um, uh, construct the solution everywhere. And uh, and that is what uh, what uh, what the what the physicists want from you. I mean, the phenomenologists. I'm also a physicist, but the phenomenologists want uh, want from uh, you from this. And indeed, this can be done. And we have done this in these papers up to four loops. But then we realized that uh, there are shortcomings in this geometric description that I want to sort of uh, overcome. And what is the shortcoming? One I have already mentioned. If you look at the deformation space of this Calabi-Yau that I'm looking at then it actually grows with the uh, loop order to the power two. While the physical parameters, as we have seen in the banana diagram, this was just the masses plus the external momentum, they actually grow with L plus one. So, uh, so this uh, Calabi-Yau is a little bit, uh, is very redundant. And, uh, and if, you, um, if you then want to construct all the solutions in the middle cohomology, uh, then it becomes even worse because uh, the middle cohomology will become very big and you need only a tiny subspace in order to describe this Feynman diagram. And, uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, uh, this coefficient lambda naught, uh, this, this, loca this local coefficients can only be determined approximately by numerically analytic contu uh, continuation. So basically what you do is you, t you take them somewhere, uh, you go to the next point, the uh, next singularity, and you uh, calculate them in the overlap, and then you do numerical analytic continuation. That is very cumbersome. But we will uh, sort of give a better description where uh, also this phi log are related to setter values, which come from this gamma class. So basically to overcome these problems, uh, in the second paper, we propose a better Calabiao motive uh, for this banana graph, and then a new gamma class techniques that were actually inspired from homological mirror symmetry. So, so what is the better motive? So the better motive is uh, the following. So you look again at this Feynman graph, and you see they have this um, uh, uh, L plus one masses here. And what we realize, um, <clears throat> actually with help of uh, Matker and, uh, and also uh, databases on Fano variety by Tom Coates and Corti uh, is that the good uh, motive is you take a complete intersection in a product of um, L plus one P ones. And in order to make this a Calabi-Yau, you need to have two uh, hypersurface, I mean, two, uh, two complete, uh, you have to have a complete intersection of two polynomials. And each of them has degree one in all of this P1. So you need two in order to cancel the canonical class. I mean, that you see uh, uh, to make the canonical class trivial. I mean, that is, uh, we will see also later. And this whole thing is embedded in the Fano variety, uh, which is just 
um, uh, uh, given by the same Amien space, but you take only one hypersurface. So this has positive canonical class. And, uh, <clears throat> and now uh, this, um, this mirror manifold is, is actually this complete intersection color Biao. And, uh, and, and, uh, and that gives a very nice um, uh, non uh, much less redundant parameterization because then you see uh, that the quantum volumes of all these P1s are literally the masses. So you have only as many parameters in the problem for all L as you have masses. And this is a much, much uh, more efficient description of um, of the uh, of the uh, of the Feynman graph amplitude. So what we want we we want instead of having the full cohomology of this comp of this hypersurface in this toric variety, we want to have the primitive vertical cohomology of these complete uh, uh, of these incomplete intersection manifolds. And as I said, the most beautiful part of it, or the nicest part of it, is that these masses they become just the quantum volumes of each of these P1s. And, um, and so that uh, you already know how this graph behaves if you, for instance, let the momentum uh, go to infinity. Then it will develop all these log singularities. And, uh, and that is also a good hallmark uh, how uh, which Calabiao you, will, uh, you should associate to the graph. Because each graph has, of course, uh, a high energy limit. Uh, in which uh, its solution get this um, maximal unipotent log structure, and that's where uh, where um, where you can uh, make the dictionary between the com uh, the uh, topology of your Calabiao and the maximal degeneration of your Feynman graph. So, <clears throat> so of course this is the limit. But away from this limit, we can sort of resort to this work that we have done for complete intersection Calabiaos. Uh, long ago, I mean, as I said, this was in the context of string compactification, because, but now it becomes quite useful for Feynman graphs. So, uh, so this will, this GKC system that is associated to this complete intersection is much easier than the GKC system that is associated to the um, hypersurface in the toric variety uh, P delta and uh, leads much quicker to a, a solution. So what is also quite nice about this um, about these Calabiaos is that they have a very very intricate uh, vibration structure. So if you uh, if you look what is an elliptic curve in this uh, description of hypersurfaces, this is so to say uh, would correspond to the two loop graph. It is given by uh, these complete intersection in three p ones, and then a K three would be given by uh, this two complete intersections in four P1s. But of course, if you, um, if you look at this K3, it is fibered in uh, four different ways by this elliptic curves. And if you go on, then uh, you get a Calabiao uh, threefold. And this is fibered in five ways uh, by the uh, K3s that I presented before. And this K3s are fibered in, in each of them is fibered in in four ways uh, by the elliptic curve. And this, okay. uh, this uh, vibration structure um, goes on. And, but if you look at the graph, it's actually quite uh, natural because you can get, let any of these masses go to infinity in arbitrary order. And, and in each of these cases, you should get the lower graph, which so to say happened, of course, to be uh, described by a lower dimensional Calabiao. So this is actually the only, uh, this vibration structure must be there and it is, uh, is, is there. And if uh, you- Albrecht, can, can you write out, uh, uh, starting from M case, uh, can you write out the explicit equations of these elliptic curves, uh, K3 surfaces and so on? Yeah, I mean, basically what you do is you take, uh, you take a generic uh, hypersurface of a multi-degree 111 in each of these P1s yeah. and write this out and you write out the uh, a generic hypersurface of degree, um, again, of degree 11 and you take the complete intersection. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it certainly uh, takes some... Uh, yeah, you can write it down. But uh, uh, what I don't understand is, uh, for the fixed uh, parameters, you ju get just one Calabiao. No, no, but it's always a family in, uh, it's always a family in this physical parameters. 
Oh, I see, I see. So, so I, uh, I, I mean, if you would write down really these polynomials, you would find that they have coefficients and these coefficients can vary. And that would be the physical parameters. I see. Yeah, okay, okay so then um, now, of course, the title of the paper is sort of uh, the analytic structure of this Feynman graph. And, uh, and for, this, uh, for the ease of the presentation, I want to uh, restrict to the case where all the masses are equal. And uh, then we have basically only, or I set them e uh, even to one. I mean, um, <clears throat> I mean there, there's any, anyway a scaling, so I can, can do that. So and then I have only uh, this, uh, this uh, parameter which corresponds to the momentum, which I call T, and for reason uh, that um, to connect this with parameterization in uh, mirror symmetry, so that the mum point is at s equals zero, I take one over T. But then you see, uh, you uh, get a, uh, um, uh, I mean, you get a differential equation. I can show you this differential equation. I will show you. And this differential equation has um, a lot of, has this mum point, which is here. And it has a lot of conifold points, which are at, um, at uh, squares of, uh, of, of, um, of um, sorry, uh, one over squares of natural numbers. So it's like uh, the last one is at L plus one over L plus one squared. And then it goes all the way down to S equal one. And then at S equal infinity, the people in the Feynman graph community have actually found that this whole, uh, that the Feynman graph is related to Bessel function. I will present uh, this, how this works. And then uh, you see also this, uh, this light uh, uh, yellow points, they correspond to points where the Hasseweil setter function in the case of a, four, a threefold factorize. They're in a sense, uh, very special fibers where you can say, more things about the period values. Uh, that is not so relevant from the point of view of physics, but it's very interesting from the point of view of number theory. Uh, so, so that's why I included them. So let, uh, in particular, at the point s equal one, you see that, uh, that, the, uh, that this chain integral is of pure torsion in the cohomology of the Calabiao, and therefore you can actually uh, find um, L function values that are related to the period of the Calabiao give up to rational numbers the, the actual value of the Feynman graph for this particular value of the momentum. Uh, so Albert, when you speak about uh, Hasseweil fun uh, uh, zeta function, yes. uh, do, uh, uh, is it uh, the zeta function of this uh, Calabiao uh, fiber or, or of what? Yeah, of the Calabiao fiber. And, and these points that I uh, indicated here, it's actually not for all uh, dimensions, it's just for the dimension three. Yeah. Uh, the, is it, uh, this variety always de defined over a Z or not? No, I mean, I wanted to have it, yeah, I wanted to have it defined over the complex number. But of course, if I want to uh, investigate special values of the periods, I want. I, I'm eventually in, interested in the periodic analysis. I, I mean, I show you a little bit later uh, uh, what particular uh, values I can explain in this way. But uh, but here I want to give you sort of uh, an 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 um, an uh, example. I mean, this would be now a Calabiao uh, fourfold. Uh, sorry, a threefold. And then the periods, uh, it's a one parameter Calabiao uh, threefold. So the uh, Picard Fuchs equation is of order four. And here is the differential, uh, differential operator for this Picard Fuchs equation. And uh, <clears throat> there is some uh, effort by, um, <clears throat> by Almquist, Enkefort, uh, Van Straten, and Sedilin, uh, which have classified uh, many of this. Um, uh, differential operators of order four, which be which belong to one parameter families of Calabiao threefolds, and it sort of say happen to be one of those, <laughs> and and that that is uh, that is also the reason that in this case I can uh, make a couple of more remarks about the arithmetic of this uh, of the Feynman graph. So this is a is a little bit a lucky coincidence. It is one of these operators that has already. 
uh, gotten the att uh, attention of, uh, of people doing arithmetic geometry of Calabiao one parameter family. So let me uh, now uh, sort of uh, uh, say the most important thing about this picture. You see, uh, as I said, the, uh, the physicists have found here Bessel function representations. And this Bessel function representation, they, they converge all the way to this last conifold. So in other words, um, the other solution of the picard fuchs equation might acquire singularities here. But my particular solution uh, that is relevant for the Feynman uh, graph does, it, does only acquire a singularity here. And therefore, uh, for this particular solution, I only have to care essentially about a three region. This region, the large radius region, uh, the, the mum point, this conifold region where it does do something special, and this Bessel region uh, where uh, this is, so to say, at the other side of the P1, that is the modular space here. So therefore, now I, I talk about these three regions. And uh, so at S infinity, this is called the Bessel point. And, and uh, it is over the years, these people that do Feynman integrals become better and better in that. And they uh, were already able to uh, express the Feynman integral in this region by, uh, by uh, a last integral over, uh, over a combination of Bessel functions. So these i naught and k naught are the Bessel functions, and you have to integrate this over one more region. And, uh, and here you see, again, these physical parameters. And as I said, so to say, the radius of convergence of this uh, expression is, um, is limited by this last conifold. And so in a sense, our contribution is to, uh, to explain the properties of the Feynman graph in this uh, ray, uh, in this large in this uh, mum point region, and find the connection matrix. And of course, if you um, if you think about general mass parameter, then it's not a point, but it's this uh, it's this divisor um, where the thing becomes singular. <clears throat> what is also interesting is uh, or, or or explains a little bit why this graph is so easy and why the uh, people have made so much progress in it. If you look at this differential operator that I've written he down here, then <clears throat> you quickly realize it's basically just a symmetric um, product of, of the Bessel function operator, theta minus uh, constant, uh, and then uh, two Borel transformations on it. <coughs> and with this recipe, you can also easily uh, write down these operators for all, uh, for all um, loops and that's I, how i also know that the, that this uh, in general that the singularities are here <clears throat> so um so then there is the conifold region and uh, at the conifold region there is a uh, is one single cycle coming down and uh, according to uh, left chats this uh, corresponds to a reflection monodromy if l is odd which means that the dimension of the calabiao is even or a symplectic re reflection, a shift, if the dimension of the Calabiao is odd or the loop order is even. And uh, by homological mirror symmetry, uh, we expect that there, uh, the vanishing cycle is actually determined by the gamma class of the structure sheaf on the Calabiao. And that uh, actually allows us uh, to give exactly the linear combination of these um, of this uh, vanishing uh, cycle. And the interesting thing when you relate this to physics is you know by the optical theorem, the imaginary part of the amplitude is basically the total cross section. So it's, it is that the total cross section of this banana amplitudes is actually uh, uh, dominated by the gamma class of the, uh, of the Calabiao. So that is uh, what I want to say about the conifold. And then at the maximal unipotent monodromy, uh, we have, of course, in this butter F variables, uh, there's, they're already at normal crossing. So this, uh, this is very good. And we can easily write down uh, a, a, a basis of a logarithmic periods there. And, uh, and so, um, <clears throat> so we know that the, that the monodromies are maximal uh, unipotent. And that means that uh, if you take this monodromies around all these divisors here, and you uh, subtract one and take it to the power uh, to some power, then it's zero. But the power is the maximum power that is possible. Uh, 
I mean, it's, it's, uh, it is always, uh, uh, it's always uh, must be uh, uh, less, uh, less equal than the dimension. And it is less, it is this maximum power that, uh, that you need. And uh, <clears throat> so, so this is true for this maximum powers and no lower uh, exponent um, uh, makes this equation uh, to hold. And uh, I mean, there are many, of course, uh, uh, papers on the degeneration of Calabiao or algebraic varieties. And for instance, one is this uh, Wilfried Schmidt orbit theorem, which tells you how this maximal behavior is uh, caused, that is caused by a hierarchical structure of these degenerating cycles. They correspond to a hierarchical structure of logarithmic solutions. And, uh, and if you look at this, uh, at this paper uh, picture that I first showed you, I mean, uh, the masses correspond then exactly to, the, uh, to this rational uh, curves uh, that are in the ambient space. And, uh, and one of the nice results that we have that, uh, that we can also formulate a new gamma class conjecture, which is related to the Fano variety in which this uh, Calabiao is embedded, and that captures the full Feynman graph. So I don't know uh, how much time I should use because I'm running a little late, actually. Um, so, so I want to say maybe because it's uh, also related to number theory, uh, so for the Calabiao, uh, for the Calabiao uh, threefold, uh, you can calculate uh, the Hasseweil setter function, and you see that at this point, that the special points it factorizes, and then uh, these AP are coefficients of uh, a Hecke modular form of weight two. Uh, in this case, the conductor is uh, is 30, uh, 34 or something, and these BPs are. Uh, Hecke eigenvalues of a modular form of weight uh, four, and uh, and if you calculate now the periods, I mean that is uh, that is the uh, precise. Uh, sorry, this, yeah, the conductor was thirty four, but it also has a character, and um, and this was uh, already uh, recently done in a uh, observed. I mean this uh, this this form was observed in a in a paper by Candelas, De La Osa, Elmi, and Van Straten. And they calculated also the periods, but in order to get the full period matrix, you also need the quasi periods. And that my student uh, Bernish actually calculated because we are now investigating in particular uh, these, uh, these special points on Calabiao uh, threefolds. And, and in this way, you get at this special point, you get actually exact values um, uh, of the Feynman integral in terms of um, of periods and quasi periods of modular forms or L function values if, if you want to, uh, I mean, if you want to say it's simpler. So let me uh, go now to the, uh, to so sort of a theorem, uh, namely, so we want to have the analytic solution, of course, here, because here uh, uh, the physicists uh, have done all this. And in order to do that, we follow basically this, what we did in the paper with Yao. So we have the GKC system, and we can now canonically uh, um, uh, define uh, Frobenius spaces by, uh, by the deformation method, or sometimes this is called Huventhal I function because he used it in the proof of mirror symmetry. But the idea is very simple. You have, uh, you have uh, um, basically a generalized hypergeometric function, and you define these coefficients uh, um, uh, not uh, uh, as depending uh, discreetly on n, but you deform them by an epsilon parameter, and so you uh, deform the exponential. And these coefficients are given basically by uh, exponents, uh, by, by, uh, by um, sorry, Pochhammer symbols or, or gamma function uh, or, or uh, factorials. And you do uh, replace these factorials by the gamma function, you get the deformation. And, uh, and then if you take the derivative of this form, you get all the uh, higher logarithmic solutions. And the precise combinations that you have to take of this uh, derivatives is given to you uh, by mirror symmetry, by the intersection numbers of the chow uh, ring in, the, in this primitive cohomology of this manifold. And as I said, now the main, uh, the good thing is that the primitive cohomology doesn't grow very fast, so it grows binomially. So you still have a good uh, control over the solutions that you need in order to linear combine this Feynman graph. <clears throat> okay, so then um, now I came uh, come to the uh, main 
uh, statement, which uh, I, I had in the meantime uh, uh, contact also with Iritani, and he says this is a true statement, so it's provable. I mean, you can fill in the dots, but the, but the uh, I, I will sort of say it's a it's a statement, and uh, let mathematicians do it uh, correctly. <clears throat> but I think it 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 can be proven. So what is the statement? The statement is, uh, as I said, we need. We have a Frobenius spaces. I have described you how this Frobenius spaces is constructed by derivatives with respect to the solution, and uh, and so the uh, I, I'm interested in what these coefficients are here that you need in order to express the Feynman graph in terms of this Frobenius spaces because that is what really the physicists need uh, to know what is the uh, what is this uh, what is this linear combination that they need to calculate. And uh, and so the the statement is that this uh, these coefficients that give you the right linear combination of the Frobenius spaces they are given by the generating function which is uh, given here so it is the quotient of two gamma functions here is the Euler Macaroni constant so this uh, uh, has the effect that in the expansion no further Euler Macaroni constants will appear and then there is an uh, is a shift with an imaginary um, an imaginary shift. That means that these lambdas also have some imaginary part. And then uh, on the right hand side of the generating function, you have to put an L factorial. So that explains the one, uh, that, that explains the admixture uh, of the holomorphic period to the Feynman graph, which is the most complicated one. And then uh, the other uh, case that would uh, tell you the admixture of the logarithmic solution to the Feynman. And uh, they are related to this uh, just given uh, coefficient by this uh, simple formula. <clears throat> and then, as I said, uh, the vanishing cycle at the conifold is given just by the imaginary part of this, uh, of this coefficient lambda L. So this comes from uh, the fact that here is an imaginary shift in the, and as I said, that, that gives basically by the optical theorem the total cross section to the Feynman graph. So it's quite, uh, quite physical. And here uh, now, uh, let's say uh, an example how these coefficients look. So you are interested in how often the holomorphic solution, uh, I mean, how the holomorphic solution admixes to your Feynman graphs. And you expand this, you see this goes, let's say for five loops is a Calabiao uh, fourfold. It will go with this combination of zeta functions, where I also wrote the even zeta function in terms of zeta function instead of pi, because that makes it a little bit easier. And then uh, you uh, can also get uh, the uh, subleading terms. This would be the thing that... Uh, that Albrecht, uh, here zeta is just the Riemann zeta. Yeah, it's the Riemann zeta. Yeah. I mean, it basically comes from the expansion of this gamma function. Because what I'm saying is that this combination of gamma functions, if you expand it, that gives you the, uh, that gives you the uh, lambda. So therefore, uh, you get all these uh, combinations of zeta, but you get, for instance, never uh, a multiple zeta value in this calculation. Anyway, if you uh, want to have it with uh, non-equal masses, this was for the equal mass case where you have, uh, so to say, just this logarithmic solution. If you want to have it for the non-equal mass cases, then you construct this, uh, this at, at uh, let's say, at level, at a uh, if, the if you have here a logarithmic solution, you have many logarithmic solutions, and they are just given by the primitive cohomology of your ambient space, uh, uh, sorry, of your Calabiao space. And uh, so here, for instance, you would have for the for loop graph, you would have a four logarithmic solution and so on. And you have to also find these ones, but they are also given by the gamma class. So when you see the proof, you can see that uh, it, it doesn't make a big difference whether you have the equal mass Feynman graph or the, uh, or the general Feynman graph. So, so here I give you the, uh, these coefficients. Now, you, as I said, I mean, for instance, for for loop, you have here five uh, logarithmic solution and you see there's a very symmetric splitting, of course, because the whole situation is so symmetric. And that gives you how the, uh, the full basis of solution uh, can be linear combined to get the Feynman. And now I can get to the uh, proof of, uh, or the idea of the proof of this uh, gamma class uh, uh, using this gamma classes uh, of these coefficients. 
So this gamma class basically uh, was uh, was proposed by Kazakov and Kosevich and Pantev and then Goyachev and Iritani uh, worked it out for some Fano varieties and uh, and uh, and so you can actually uh, I mean there's a, f a fully developed theory how the gamma class uh, gives the uh, gives the asymptotic behavior of these periods. And uh, now I define this mirror map again. I mean, this is uh, the mirror map. So it's the uh, logarithmic period over the holomorphic period. And, uh, and now uh, I define what the gamma class is. So that, uh, what is the gamma class? So the gamma class is, um, so you take a sheaf. I mean, S, S uh, this calligraphic S is a sheaf of rank N. And then uh, the uh, uh, regulated gamma or regularized gamma class Will be um, will be um, um, a combination of zeta function and the churn classes, um, sorry, the churn characters of this chief. And then you just need some fact from holomorphic mirror symmetry, as I said. So, for instance, Seidel, Kazakov, Konsevich, and Pantev they observed that this vanishing cycle at the nearest conifold is given by this particular uh, evaluation of the gamma class, and. Uh, and uh, so that that's what they said what what they say so basically to fill in the dots i have just to calculate this in the in the appropriate uh, geometry that i propose and then i have to see that this gives the formulas that i uh, that i claim and then uh, for the uh, for the um, uh, for the full feynman graph i claim it is this gamma class so this is a little bit of a modification but as I said, Iritani got a little bit excited about this, and then he uh, said that this is actually the right combination to take. But this uh, he has to prove. I mean, I just uh, say uh, take this as a confirmation that we do the right thing. Uh, but this is uh, uh, this is provable, uh, I believe, and uh, uh, I guess also Vasily could prove it. Or, or uh, this is easy. Uh, no, it's not easy. But given the work that the people have done on this theory of gamma classes, you can do it. Um, but anyway, so um, so then you just do standard intersection calculus. You basically calculate the churn classes because you need uh, the churn classes in order to calculate the gamma class. So uh, the churn classes is just uh, calculated by the adjunction formulas. Uh, remember that you have L plus one uh, P ones. So then uh, in the uh, the ambient space is given uh, the uh, the churn. Uh, the generating function of the churn classes is given by this function, and then for the uh, for the uh, for the two degree two hypersurface, they have this uh, normal bundles, and uh, and uh, you take the churn class by just taking the uh, formally the expansion and taking the degree k that gives you the k churn class. But then you find, of course, many simplifications because the geometry is so simple. So in particular, since uh, since this h are hyperplane classes in each p one. Uh, each h square is zero, and that means that the churn class are actually symmetric powers in this h. So it's not a big, uh, big, big deal. And uh, and you can write down these churn classes in terms of symmetric powers. And the only thing that happens is a prefactor that I written there. And that is the case for the Calabiao. But you can do the same calculation for the Fano variety. Just you uh, have here a power one, and then. And you you find the same thing, only a different normalization factor in front of that. And then uh, finally, if you want to evaluate that, then you find again a very simple formula. Namely, if you want to evaluate a combination of churn classes whose degree, of course, match the dimension of the Calabiao, uh, in order to be not zero, you get just this normalization that I gave gave uh, and uh, and this formula. And you see. Uh, that, that stands for X that is true for the Fano. You just have to put this, this normalization or it also holds for the Calabiao. You have to put the, this normalization. And, and also the intersection numbers, uh, they are very similar, uh, simple. I mean, they're basically symmetric polynomials. Uh, on the Calabiao is a symmetric polynomial multiplied by two and on the Fano is just a symmetric polynomial like that. And with these properties, you just calculate it. And you can, uh, with a little bit of, of algebra, you can actually show that this formula is true. I mean, this formula here. So this is a very nice formula, which gives you all the connection matrices. And, uh, and since we have such a nice geometric motif, uh, we can calculate the transition matrix uh, for all loops. And, 
I think uh, there's no Feynman graph where uh, for all loops you can get the full analytic structure. So this is a is is a is a is a is a good result in Feynman graphs. Even. And uh, well, let me come to the conclusions. So uh, this is of course a sort of a Goldilocks case. It's uh, it's it. I mean, as I showed you, the general Feynman graphs will have a U polynomial, a G polynomial. Uh, and will be more complicated and will also have more external momentum. And uh, so it's a very simple case. But uh, I believe it has revealed some general features that uh, that uh, can maybe pave the way for further, further progress in higher loop calculations in more complicated situations. So one thing which I find remarkable, which have not been uh, appreciated so much in the Feynman graph literature, is that this maximal unipotent point where the periods degenerate uh, maximally is actually fits perfectly with the high energy generation structure of this Feynman uh, amplitude. So the people know that they will get a lot of logs in this limit, but they haven't appreciated that if you have a Calabiao description, this corresponds to the maximum unipotent monodromy. And this is a good news because then when we use this gamma class formalism that we also uh, uh, proposed here, then, uh, then of course, the Feynman graph degeneration at this uh, high energy limit will sort of reveal what topology this guy has. So for instance, in the Calabi-Yau threefold case, it will reveal you what are, the, uh, what are the triple intersection numbers, and it will reveal you what are the churn classes. And and I am I mean we know that uh, that by uh, by theorem of CTC wall for six dimensional manifolds this basically distinct this basically uh, classifies the Calabi-Yau up to topological type. So it it basically when you look at the Feynman graph in the large uh, large uh, uh, energy region, it will tell you what kind of topology the Calabi-Yau uh, has. And, uh, and then you, uh, people also study um, the master integrals, but uh, from the point of view of mathematics, these master integrals are not much more than integrating instead of the holomorphic uh, three form uh, of, uh, um, over the full basis of cohomology. So, so, uh, so they, they have various integrals. So for instance, um, they, they, they take derivative with respect to the mass, they call this master integrals, but that, of course, sort of uh, what it does, it, it fills out the homology, uh, the cohomology of the Calabi-Yau. So, uh, so it's also a very nice uh, case uh, about uh, what the master integrals do. And it's also very interesting that the master integrals should all have the same analytic structure in that the only relevant uh, uh, this is a physical property because it's related to the optical theorem that all the master integrals, that all the other cohomology elements should have the same um, uh, uh, basic points. It should also have uh, have uh, a logarithmic solution at this conifold and the mum point and uh, and um, and so on. So these master integrals they use in order to reduce all kinds of Feynman integrals to uh, functions that they can calculate. And then what we also learned is that these databases are not, uh, 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 they are very useful. I mean, they are not, uh, not uh, in vain, so to say. I mean, uh, I mean, a particular good is the uh, databases that Kreutzer and Skarke uh, um, um, uh, assembled because they classify all reflexive polyhedra. So even so for our case, it was not the best way to do it, but uh, this is still a very uh, useful a uh, way to maybe for more general Feynman graphs to find these guys. And then the other thing is this uh, list that uh, people have done for one parameter uh, families that is given uh, at this uh, website. And then also uh, what people have done for um, uh, for uh, four dimensional Fano, uh, sorry, three dimensional Fano varieties has proven to be very useful because there they uh, sort of uh, tell you if you have, for instance, the holomorphic solution, what kind of geometry this would be. And in a sense, I mean, as I said, uh, people, uh, I mean, nature loves uh, elliptic integrals and uh, it uh, also loves, uh, apparently, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, I don't know to which extent this is true, but it also seems uh, that, um, that um, this uh, integrals of Calabi-Yau 
uh, and Fano varieties play a big role in physics and and then this databases uh, would uh, be a way to find uh, the, the, the best motive when you have the Fano graph. And also on a more speculative basis, we realized that actually uh, in this, there is this nekrasov shatashvili uh, formalism of integral models. They have an epsilon parameter and they have a difference recursion appear between this epsilon parameter. And if you look at the dimensional regularization that people do in Feynman graphs, then you see they have also different recursions relations between these different integrals they have here. So, so maybe it's even true that, um, that this dimensional expansion of Feynman graph has something to do with, uh, with, uh, with integrable systems, because this is what uh, the motivation that uh, Nesgrasov and Shatash really um, uh, led to consider this, uh, this, uh, this limit. Okay, so with these remarks, I would like to stop. Um, Thank you, Albrecht. So, uh, 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 questions, remarks, everyone is welcome. Uh, I have many questions, but I'm sorry I have to leave in two minutes for recitations. Uh -huh. so, Do the well, most important one. <laughs> I will not ask uh, ask questions, but uh, uh, Albrecht, can you provide the slides of your talk? Of or? course, and also I can uh, I can uh, give this uh, um, <coughs> this video or whatever this is. Yes, but one very short question. Let me nevertheless ask: Is uh, your very last remark about Nikrasov and Shatterfield? We know that right. so the this system. First of all, they have two epsilon parameters. Right, but uh, but the necklace of Shatashvili limit is really where you have one epsilon parameter, where you set epsilon one to minus epsilon two, and then you have only one. Ah, uh, yeah, but that, that's um, well. That this limit we basically know it corresponds to just standard ma matrix model. Yeah, it's, it's even the better. So you have uh, you have a. Uh, maybe an easy way to explain the dimensional re uh, regularization procedure in Feynman graphs. Yeah, and uh, but you don't have the uh, uh, the other limit like when epsilon one is not epsilon two. Uh, no, but uh, okay. I mean, you have to uh, you have to take what you get. I mean, in Feynman graphs, you have only one epsilon. No, no, no. no. Just 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 to us yeah. and. The other question is uh, also because uh, there is also, uh, of course, this activity related to Feynman graphs with amplitudehedrons. Yes. But it's on, on the opposite side. They consider actually high order uh, correlation functions. Right. But maybe there is some kind of uh, interesting duality between these two. Because this could, uh, yeah, this could be. I mean, I'm 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 very new to this subject. So basically, um, I realized by the paper of Pierre van Hove and Spencer Bloch uh, that there is a big relation between Feynman graphs and uh, and the Calabi-Yau uh, motives, and um, and so that's the angle I uh, approach this thing. But I I think you're right. I mean, uh, there 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 might be uh, there there almost for sure relation to this amplihedron uh, formalism that people use in, um, uh, in amplitude calculation. So, um, again, but I'm, I'm, I'm the wrong I'm person to ask. Right away. <laughs> yes. But thank you again for ins a very inspiring talk. Uh, thank you, thank you. Other questions? Um, yeah. Maybe I have a question, uh, Albrecht. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, somehow you get uh, a, a large family uh, of uh, Calabi-Yau varieties. That's right. So this is basically this uh, family of, uh, I mean, this is a sequence of families of complete intersection, which I think is the best description is the here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, suppose I could, uh, 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 suppose I could write out the uh, equation of uh, this uh, total space uh, and its vibration into Calabi Yau uh, 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 by explicit equations. Uh, so uh, could I uh, hope uh, 
uh, that the coefficients of these equations would be rationals or not? Um, the coefficients... I mean that you, you get a variety which is yes. defined over complex numbers. But right. then all of a sudden you find out that at some points uh, 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 it has some, uh, some number, number theory properties. Right. So I would suggest that the reason for that is that the, uh, 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 a priori the coefficients are complex. In fact, uh, they are uh, uh, rationals. And then you can reduce it modular different p's, get zeta functions, and consider the arithmetic of that variety. Is that true or not? I think that is true, but I can tell you how we obtained this theory. So basically what you do is um, uh, we, this is, this is uh, uh, more following the work of Twork. So basically you, um, you uh, make a periodic analysis of the periods. All right. And then you uh, calculate the determinant of the Frobeniuses. Yes. And, uh, and when you do that, you get uh, precisely, when you do this, so to say, one, integer, uh, one p uh, prime at a time, you can get this factorization of the uh, Hasselweil set of functions. So we, we never actually did calculate points on, my ma on this manifold. So we, uh, we did it a little bit indirectly. Um, so, but, I, but you can do that. I mean, uh, I think you can, uh, you can really uh, go ahead. Uh, and uh, do what you're saying. I mean, uh, take this uh, this variety um, with um, with uh, coefficients of uh, of of the rationals and analyze this over uh, over the over this field F P K and get this uh, this thing as well. It just turned out that uh, for technical reason is much more quick because this uh, traces of the Frobenius you can. I mean, this is what my student did. I mean, you can basically uh, turn it into machine. You uh, right. you you calculate the the periods uh, periodically, and then you uh, you take this uh, traces of the Frobenius, and you get very quick uh, an analysis when this Hasselweil setup function factorizes and what, when not. <coughs> and uh, and that is um, something which was pioneered basically by. Uh, von Straten and um, and uh, also uh, Fernando Villegas. So we we have not done the hard work here. We have uh, we have uh, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, calculated the traces of the Rubinius in order to get this result. I see. I see. Because uh, what uh, <coughs> the, very interesting from the uh, the. A number theory point of view is to uh, understand how the Hasselweil uh, uh, zeta function varies when you go along the variety. Because yeah, yeah, I mean that is precisely what that it's not the only point when you can calculate the Hasselweil. Yeah, no, this is this is this is absolutely true. I mean the uh, the so so basically what uh, what this pro program amounts to i mean maybe is q or maybe is a quadratic extension as here usually right. but but you do um you do um calculate this at various points in the moduli space then the analysis of calculating for venus is very quickly and then you sort of uh, check how often it factorizes Right. And that's the way you actually find these points. And, and uh, Kilian is very good in finding these points. He also found points which have, where you don't have, uh, um, um, you have uh, 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 products of modular forms um, coming in and describing uh, this. I mean, this, these numbers here that are then uh, products of a weight uh, three and a weight two form. So, so there are many, uh, many interesting questions related to uh, how do the Hasselweil setter function uh, behave um, over uh, over families of Calabiao, and uh, and uh, and that, that's something uh, I'm very interested in. I mean, I just say for this physical uh, thing, you know, the Feynman graph very, uh, very, ex uh, very good at one point, but uh, but that's not exactly what my colleagues need. My colleagues need uh, to know them everywhere fast basically. And is, 
provide a physical interpretation of this point? Yeah, I mean, for uh, I mean, this is uh, there. There's a lot of, and you can see this in our work. There's a lot of work on this point, and this point is uh, is actually uh, a little bit more interesting from the physical point of view, because I mean, um, for instance, when you calculate the uh, magnetic moment of the electron, uh, somehow this graph appears, and it has to be taken at this point. So yeah, there is some S, S equals one, yes. Yeah, this is a conifold point, and yeah. uh, and then the people. I mean, I have not, uh, I have not um, uh, really um, um, give you all the details. But if you look in our paper, then you will probably. I mean, then you then you will find an overview of what the people. I mean, I was uh, myself very amazed what the people know about this point. Um, so. If you look here, so if you look here, then we have, for instance, um, at this point, uh, I mean, at least we sort of uh, took the effort and collected what uh, people knew. And uh, that is all very interesting. Um, so here you see, I mean, here is, is basically what they know. I mean, for instance, if this is always this point one, and you see they know, for instance, for one loop, it's a, is a, is a directly character L function, then for two loop is uh, given like that, but for uh, three loop, it becomes already interesting. This is, uh, this is a weight three L function, then it's a weight, uh, I mean, this is a weight four modular form, a weight a six modular form, and the people have actually proven that stuff. I mean, this is, a, this is, this is also very interesting. Yes, and at uh, S plus? Not as S, S, plus. S, S plus, any meaning from the point of view of physics? Unfortunately, uh, I don't know. I mean, I would say it's uh, the fact that the Hasselwald setter function factorizes in this way. I mean, you see, the, 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 I think uh, the crucial point here is also that this point of, is of pure torsion, that the, that, the, that the chain integral is of pure torsion in the cohomology of the Calabiao. That is yeah. not the case at these other points. Right. So therefore, even if I know something about the periods of the Calabiao, I wouldn't say something immediately about the Feynman graph. I see. I have no more questions. Uh, anyone else, please? So uh, then maybe uh, we thank uh, uh, Albrecht. Albrecht, it was really very interesting, though I couldn't say that I have understood the 100% of it, maybe 5% or 10, but that's all already enough for me to think about. Yeah, I mean, I think the main message maybe is that, uh, that uh, this Calabiao periods actually play a role in physics beyond string theory. It's an interesting message. It plays a role in quantum field theory. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, uh, and I think that uh, at some point we'll discuss uh, what will be the, who will be the next speaker uh, that I do not know yet. Uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, the seminar has started and uh, thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then I, I have to stop the recording.